What's up guys, this is Brian Mounts. I run the Turf Mechanic YouTube channel. I also live in California and I wanted to talk to you today about probably one of the worst weeds that you possibly could have in the state of California. There's a small chance that you'll have this weed somewhere else around the country, but this is pretty much for all 8 million households out there in the state of California that could have grass. You could have this weed in your lawn and I swear to you, it is worse than crabgrass. Back here in my lawn, I've let it get a little bit overgrown. You can see I've got a lot of yellowing out there. The yellowing is the weed that I am talking about. It is called Kikuya grass. You can literally go to the store in Southern California and purchase Kikuya grass seed. You could purchase kind of the improved variety, but I promise you that the improved variety of Kikuya grass is still borderline worse of a weed than crabgrass is. Somewhere around 100 years ago in the early 1900s, someone brought Kikuya grass over from, I want to say it was East Africa, thinking that it was St. Augustine grass. They planted it somewhere here in California and it has taken over. It is invasive beyond description. It's essentially a warm season grass that is a little bit more robust in the more mild warm season climates. So many places here in Southern California are, I mean, they never get cold. Like we don't frost, we don't have snow, it never freezes around here, but it also, where I live, doesn't ever get to 100 degrees. Kikuya grass is not going to go dormant at lower soil temperatures. So say, for instance, that soil temperature gets down to 55 to 50 degrees. Most of your worms, well, all of your worm season grasses are going to go dormant at that point. But kikuya grass isn't. It's just going to keep on going. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to be killing off a number or a, some of a lot, hopefully, a lot of the kikuya grass that has infested the lawn here. This is my first season in this lawn. I've been documenting my progress on incrementally repairing this lawn uh, throughout the course of this season here on YouTube. And in this video, I'm going to go ahead and do my application to try to uh, push as much of this kikuya grass out of this lawn as possible. Mostly what you see back here is Bermuda grass. And now I want to dovetail into why California is such a weird place for grass uh, compared to the rest of the country. I promise I'll get to the killing here soon. Just as a teaser, we're going to be using quinclorac. But first, I want to say why California is so weird. It's in the transition zone. Most people don't understand why it's in the transition zone because most people think of California as being very hot temperature zone where you would expect warm season grasses all over the place. California is home to one of the hottest places on earth where it can get down well past 120 or well above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. But the thing is, there's a lot of mountains in California and we can grow uh, in a number of places throughout the state. We can grow cool season grasses like perennial rye, tall fescues. Right here in my neighborhood, there's a lot of Bermuda grass and tall fescue going on in the neighborhood. Over at my local Home Depot, they sell trays of uh, St. Augustine sod. You can find St. Augustine around here. Perennial rye is going to be found in some of the higher elevations or the cooler areas of the state. Sometimes you're going to find perennial rye in the more coastal environments where you get a lot of humidity and they don't need quite as much uh, irrigation as they do in the inland valleys. But truly on the coastal, you're going to see a lot of seashore pespalum. This is a warm season grass that, is, that has high salt tolerance. Uh, you don't find this throughout most of middle America, probably any of middle America. Out of all the warm season grasses, St. Augustine and Bermuda are the most common around here. And you're not really going to find Kentucky bluegrass anywhere because it is a water hog. You are, however, going to find a little bit of Kentucky bluegrass right there in my side yard. I'm growing it as an experiment during the, uh, the cooler, wet season here in California before I transition it back over to a warm season grass next year. To give you a little background on this lawn back here that I've got, this uh, when I moved into this house uh, early in the year, way back to the very beginning of 2023, I actually thought it was predominantly a Kikuya, uh, Kikuya grass lawn. There are a number of lawns through neighborhoods out here that are just Kikuya grass. And in my opinion, they are just Kikuya grass because it's such a hard weed or grass to get rid of that people just don't fight it. They fight the desirable turf grasses that are out there to eliminate them, and then they do their best, as, as good as they can, with the kakuyu that they are stuck with. So I thought this was a kakuyu grass at the very beginning of the season, but as I've been taking care of it throughout the year, it became clear to me that this was a heavy infestation of kakuyu grass in a 
largely Bermuda grass lawn. So for the past four months or so, I've been treating this like a Bermuda grass lawn, and now it's time to start eradicating as much of that Kikuyu as I possibly can. And I have realized in the middle of the summer that I have crabgrass in this lawn. Crabgrass is going to be everywhere across the whole country. And uh, here in California, I was at a birthday party with my kids this weekend, and I saw a ton of crabgrass starting to go to seed at one of the local parks. I started combing through my lawn, and sure enough, I found some patches of crabgrass that are actually just barely starting to go to seed in this lawn. So with all of that said, enter quinclorac. Quinclorac as easily is easily the best herbicide out there to kill crabgrass that is mature uh, before it goes to seed or before it completes its life cycle. Certainly we want to prevent crabgrass uh, at all costs, but if you do have crabgrass in your lawn, killing mature crabgrass is hard if you're not using quinclorac. And cool enough, quinclorac is also going to slowly kill kaikuya grass. It's not going to do it with a single application. You're going to have to apply two, probably three times on monthly intervals to have any sort of significant uh, uh, dent in your kaikuya grass problem. But if you have a widespread kaikuya grass infestation in your lawn, late summer, early fall, when most lawns here in California are still in full growth mode, you can apply quinclorac to the lawn. It's going to start going to town killing off what crabgrass that you have growing in your lawn, but it's also going to start going to town on the Kikuya grass. Quinclorac is going to be safe for basically every single thing that you're likely to find in a lawn in California. It's going to be safe for Bermuda grass, for fescue, for perennial rye, for seashore pespalum, for St. Augustine, but... St. Augustine, it can kill. So if you're going to be putting quinclorac on a St. Augustine lawn, you really got to know the differences between a St. Augustine and Kikuyu grass to know if you actually have more of one or the other, because they are very similar. I do have a video where I've compared the differences between St. Augustine and Kikuyu grass, which I'll link to down in the description below. But the short, uh, the shortest, most easy way to remember, <laughs> the bug landed on my nose, the most easy way to remember the difference is St. Augustine grass, a leaf tip that has not been cut with a lawnmower is going to have a rounded tip, whereas Kikuya grass, an unmowed tip, is going to have a really pointy tip. So go comb your, your lawn and uh, check, check for leaf tips that haven't been cut with a lawnmower anytime recently. If you're seeing rounded tips out there, you got St. Augustine, or at least a good chunk of St. Augustine in your lawn. So you're going to have to go very, very careful with the Quinclorac if you're going to go that route. Because St. Augustine is going to go dormant before Kikuyu grass is going to, one of the better options or one of the options for con controlling Kikuyu grass in a St. Augustine lawn is to wait until uh, those warmer uh, those warmer winter days in California when the St. Augustine is dormant but the Kikuyu grass is not. Then you could go ahead and apply your Conclorac or spot treat with glyphosate. For those of you Californians that have St. Augustine and your battling Kikuyu grass, I'm sorry, that's probably the hardest one of them all. With me, I've got Bermuda grass, so it's a little bit easier, but it's not perfectly easy. The easiest is probably a tall fescue lawn. There's pretty much nothing on the market that's going to kill Kikuyu grass easily. Nothing. However, there's a variety of things that will slowly kill it over time with multiple applications. Triclopyr is one. Floazifop is one. That's a funny one to say. Say it to your kids. They'll giggle. Quinclorac is one. Literally, you could apply all three and have better control of that Kikuyu grass, but there's not very many situations where you actually could apply all three. If you've got a Bermuda grass lawn like you see behind me, you're pretty much only going to be using Quinclorac because any of the other options are going to damage or kill the Bermuda grass. If you've got a fescue lawn, i got a neighbor over there just right across the street that's got a fescue lawn over there. My neighbor over there could be using Quinclorac and uh, Fluazifop. For those more mild climates here in California, if you're running ryegrass lawn, you could use quinclorac or triclopyr, but you couldn't use Fluazifop. And for those truly coastal places that run seashore pespalum uh, here on the coastal areas of California or anywhere else around, I don't know, maybe even Hawaii, mixing together a little bit of dethiopyr, which is going to give you pre-emergent attributes for the winter weeds, it's also going to help suppress the kikuyu grass, especially when used in combination with quinclorac. Quinclorac is not going to damage seashore pespalum, but Fluazifop and triclopyr will, so don't use those. Now, a further note having to do with dithiopyr. Dithiopyr, if it's going to be safe uh, for your lawn, which it is for most lawns out there, if you add that into the mix, it's going to help push Kikuyu grass back more than using the herbicide alone because 
uh, dithiopure, although it's mostly known as a pre-emergent, it also has post-emergent effects, and the post-emergent effects do take effect on kikuyu grass. I wouldn't use it, however, if you ever plan on putting a seed down. This is mostly applicable to the cool season varieties grown here in the state of California. Mostly I'm talking about perennial rye and tall fescue because those are found here in the state more than any other cool season grass out there. Now, hopefully at some point here in this video, you have seen me applying quinclorac to this lawn. Quinclorac needs to go onto dry leaf material. It's going to be best used with a non-ionic surfactant because kikuyu grass is so hard to kill it's almost imperative that you use a uh, surfactant in your tank mix because you really need to maximize the amount of herbicide that gets absorbed by that plant to have any chance whatsoever at controlling this weedy grass as fast as possible. Because these products need to get absorbed by dry foliar leaf material, the kikuyu grass, I also like personally to uh, include things in a tank mix. If I'm putting them together, I might as well add stuff that complement it. For me, I'm going to be adding some liquid iron into my tank mix. The liquid iron is going to push a little bit of a deeper green in my desirable Bermuda grass. So as I have things dying off, at least the Bermuda grass that's in the lawn is going to look its best. I also plan on coming back to this lawn after a couple days or so, mowing it down and then applying a heavy fertilizer, a heavy dose of nitrogen fertilizer to push the desirable Bermuda grass in this lawn to fill in the spaces of the uh, kikuyu grass and crabgrass that I have in this lawn. I want to push my desirable grass into those death zones uh, as fast and aggressively as possible. I'm absolutely not going to be applying that fertilizer during or before the herbicidal application because when I go to water in that fertilizer, I don't want to uh, wash the herbicide off of the leaf material. It really has to go into dry leaf material. In theory, I could fertilize now and then apply the, uh, the weed primer or the weed kill products uh, a few days from now. But since my crabgrass in the lawn is starting to go to seed, I want to kill it as fast as possible. Straight quinclorac does the job. Now, if you happen to be watching this deep into the video, I'm assuming that you care about your lawn and you live in the state of California. If you live in the state of California, we have tons of water restrictions, drought problems, all of the watering problems that we have to deal with here don't really apply to a lot of places around this country. Maybe some, but not everywhere. I have a blog post over on the Turp Mechanic website that goes deeply into how to use less water on the lawn. So if you're dealing with water restrictions in your local area here in California, but you still want to keep a good looking lawn, the best lawn you possibly can, then go into the description or click the QR code or scan the QR code that I have here on the screen. Last point here is if you do have a salad bar of a lawn with a whole bunch of weeds in it and it happens to be one of those cool season lawns or a straight up Bermuda lawn, you can add a uh, herbicidal cocktail into the tank to better kill off some of the other weeds, the broadleaf weeds that are in your lawn before everything starts going dormant and seeding a little bit later in the fall. I personally use Triad Select because it's just what I have in the garage. It's a three-way herbicide that is safe for all cool season grasses. It's also going to be safe for Bermuda grass. I'll link to that product down in the description below. I've actually got it sitting on the driveway over there. I also have videos about it here on this channel, which I'll also link to in the description if you want to see how it works in relation to other herbicides on dandelions. For me, watch this video next about fall lawn care. This is kind of a general video about fall lawn care, a little bit here and there and everywhere around the country. It's the basic things that most everyone should know about the lawn if they own a lawn during the fall season.